welcome all of you who are watching this video to my youtube channel today in this video i am going to discuss the working of capstan lathe with the help of sketches and also the few basic mechanisms involved with it i have already drawn the sketches so we can go directly on the working of capstan lathe before I start, I want to point out the major difference between the capstan lathe and the turret lathe. The, the difference is that in capstan lathe, turret head is mounted on the guide, mounted on the an auxiliary slide, which moves on the guideways provided on the saddle. While in turret lathe, turret is mounted directly on the saddle. The main parts of capstan lathe are headstock, carriage or chaser saddle, turret saddle bed and legs. I will like to go with bottom up explanation of the diagram in the order I have drawn the parts. So our first part of discussion is legs. Legs bear entire load of any system, hence the, hence the machine. Each lathe carries two legs, one below each end of the bed. These legs are of hollow casting, which bear the entire load of the bed, of sliding and stationary parts mounted over the bed, and also that are tooling and working work holding devices and mechanisms. The left leg also houses several mechanisms as such as electrical strive oil pump. Above legs are the beds. It is the rectangular box cast, casting carrying a stiff a stiffening longitudinal ribs and provided with parallel guideways over its top to enable sliding of carriage and turret saddle over them. At the same time it su supports the headstock in its own end in the figure, I have shown headstock to the left end. Because of the parallel guideways, all, all the sliding parts slide in the alignment. Also, it provides the require, required rigidity to all the parts mounted over it. Above the bed, on the right side of the bed, on above the bed, on the right side of the lathe is the turret saddle. This saddle replaces the tail stock of a, a center lathe. It is mounted directly on the side as a tail stock. In the center lid, the turret head mounted. The turret head mounted on the slide or saddle are usually hexagonal in turret lid and circular or hexagonal in capstan lid. Here in the figure, I have drawn a circular saddle to represent the same. Hexagonal turret head have six holes, one each on each plate face or equispect along the periphery of the circular head. The pallets or shanks on the tool holders are inserted in these holes and then fashioned by means of uh, screws provided on the top of these heads. A capstan, a capstan type handwheel is provided to move the saddle or the slide and hence the turret. By turning the handwheel in a reverse direction, the saddle or slide moves backward and in the meantime indexes the capstan head to bring the next tool in position. The indexing of tool is in clockwise direction. After indexing, the automatic fit can be engaged by bar fit mechanism. Now we can we will discuss the center part of the capstan lathe. The carriage or chaser saddle is similar to the saddle of an engine lathe. It carries a cross slide over it on which are mounted, mounted two, two tools, one at the front and the other at the rear or opposite end. Both the above end, both the above tools post are usually tool post in which each is capable of holding four tools at a time by means of a handle provided at the top of the tool post of, of the same can be indexed equally through 90 degrees each time to bring one tool after the other in the required position. Single post can also be used in place of the square tool post if less number of tools is required to be operated from the rear side of the job. Tools in, in the rear tools post are mounted in vertical position. Both hand and power fit can be employed to the saddle as well as cross slide, but the common practice is to use hand fit for the cross slides until and unless a very heavy job is to be machined. When power fit are in operation, stops and trip docks are used for controlling controlling the longitudinal and cross fits of the saddle and cross slide respectively. These stops and trip docks make the power fit to disengage as soon as the required tool travel is complete. Now we will go to the headstock. Capstan lathe carries a similar headstock as center lathe, but it is comparatively larger in size and heavier in constructed in order to provide a wide range of speeds, 30 to 2000 RPM. Chuck is used to hold the workpiece. Capstan lathe are generally used to operate 
perform different operation at the same time with the minimum tweet changing time and can be done with the help of two tool posts and hexagonal capstan lid with capacity of minimum of eight tools at a time considering single tool in each tool post and 14 tools maximum in considering four tools in each post. Now I would like to discuss the discuss two mechanisms one bar fitting mechanism for fitting a lo longer workpiece material for mass production and tight indexing and stop drum me mechanism for tool changing in hexagonal capstan lathe. Bar fit mechanism. It is the simplest method to fit the bar by means of wire, rope and weight, but it is limited to small machines only. In this guide bar, B is fixed to the rear side of the headstock. One end of the bar is supported on a pedestal as shown. A rotating sleeve S is mounted on the guide bar to carry the rear end of the bar stroke. Other end of the bar stroke is passed through the spindle to project outside the collet chuck. A wire rope passes over the pulley mounted either on the guide bar or a separately fixed bracket. One end of the rope is tied to the sleeve and the other end carries the weight W. Thus under the action of the weight W, the sleeve and the bar stock are always subjected to a pull from left to right as shown. As the chuck opens, the bar is automatically pushes forward through it to stack against the bar stock fitted in the turret lid. Now, we will go to the last part of the discussion that is the turret indexing and stop, stop drum mechanism in the diagram drawn. We have we can see that the index plate, indexing ratchet and bevel gear are also mounted on the turret spindle which carries the turret head on its top. The turret head rotates in the bearing fitted in the turret slide. Six equidistant radial slots are provided on the periphery of the index plate. A spring loaded plunger is engaged in these slots one by one. The plunger can actual, actuates this plunger. The turret saddle is provided with the extension as its rear to accommodate the plunger and plunger spring. Opposite to the plunger cam inside the bed is provided an indexing pole which carries a pole pin to engage the indexing ratchet. The turret is shown in the diagram is in its extreme forward position. The plunger is shown engaging a slot of the index plate to hold the turret slightly in its position. After, after the operation is over, the turret is moved backward to index it for the next position. During this backward movement, the plunger pin strikes on the cam surface, which pushes it outward to, to push the plunger out of the slot. The dexing plate is then unlocked. Simultaneously, the, the pole, pole pin engages a tooth of the ratchet, which rotates due to the backward mov movement of the turret. Since the ratchet and the turret both are mounted on the same spindle, the turret also rotates with the ratchet. The ratchet carries six equispect teeth corresponding to the six faces of the turret. Therefore, for each one tooth rotation of the ratchet, the turret is indexed through one sixth of the revolution, bringing the next face tool or tool holder in position for the next operation. Thank you for watching this video.